Welcome if you're new, my name is Philip. I'm an actor and a filmmaker. Today, we're going to be watching and reacting to the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Summer Games Fest trailer once again, and diving a little bit deeper into it, talking about some of the cinematic language, and just celebrating it as a, as a lifelong Final Fantasy fan. If you want to see some of my film work, you can check that out over on my main channel, including my popular documentary, The 14 Extreme Trainings of Shaolin Warrior Monks, or my new short film, Trial of the Four Masters. If you're new, please make sure to subscribe. We would love to have you as a part of the community as we dive deeper into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and also Final Fantasy XVI, which we will be covering in depth uh, and playing in LA. So we're very excited for that. Yeah, so I love the sort of... There's, there's been a lot of theories about what the, when we're going to see this in Rebirth. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What is this? When are we going to watch this? Like, is this how the game's going to start? Is this something that's going to play like how it showed Scarlet on TV? Are we going to see it like that? You know, and then you walk by and you oh, oh look, and you can look at the TV and like see the report. Um, is this something else? Uh, also, oh, speaking of the music, here's the real thing that I actually haven't heard anyone say yet. This music is the music that plays when you fight the whispers at the end of the game in the so-called singularity coincidence i think not a terrible disaster caused by a yeah. massive tornado which swept through sectors but it's just crazy Zero yeah look at this and we appear to have so what's interesting here is a lot of people are saying oh, oh my god ah, they're dead the interesting thing to Press. note here is that wouldn't their heads be covered like if they cover their whole bodies wouldn't they put a blanket over their head. It seems like they're more like kind of disaster survivors and they got like the blanket to keep their body temperature up if they're in shock or something. But if they covered their heads, then we wouldn't know it was them too. So I get it. But just food for thought. It could be Sephiroth illusion. Exactly. It could be an illusion. It could be anything. Shinra cover up. A lot of people said that too. Are these body doubles? Like it could be anything, man. The smoke is very realistic. Yeah. They are killing it. Yeah, and like how does Zach tie into all this? It's a good question, all right? It's a good question. They're being so deliberate with what they show here. Yeah, we never see Clown, which is very, very interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah. Search and rescue operations are already. They even show Red, which is just so sad. In progress. So sad. They don't seem to be moving, however. In any capacity. All right, so this, this is what we were talking about, right? So this is no mere coincidence that, of course, we see Aerith battered and injured. And then we go to the feather. And this is, of course, showing the Midgar Expressway, sort of turnstile, ticket turnstile thing. And then it cuts away. Obviously, referencing Sephiroth and Aerith and their connection there. Very cool. I love that. <clears throat> it's a very well done intro. And then how beautiful to show the unknown journey continues. This is, of course, the subtitle that shows when we finish the game of Remake. And like right away, I was like, oh, cool. This is this is pre-rendered. Good to see. Cool to show. And then I realized this is not pre-rendered. This is the game's graphics. Insane. Insane. Graphical fidelity. What is even happening? Look at this. <laughs> it's, it's madness. That's one of the standouts to me. Just look at the beautiful images. I truly cannot believe it. All right, what did I miss? Enemies of Shinra 2. Yes, true, true. Feels like graphics update. Oh, yeah, this is... This is an insane graphics update. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of people have said, and I've been saying this a long time ago, this is probably in Unreal Engine 5 because it's not even just like, oh, look at the resolution. It looks so clear. Like, the lighting is is radically different. It's so realistic. It's, it's insane. And the hair. The hair looks very good. And you got to remember that this is the compressed, like... 
it's not even 4K compressed on YouTube. It's 1080p compressed on YouTube. It's going to look insane. It's going to look 10 times better. It already looks better than Advent Children here by a long shot. Crazy. Crazy. Star says it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. That is the perfect way to describe it. It is Kubo nuts. Love all the theorizing. Nomura and team are evil laughing so hard. Yeah, man. It's, it's so fun. It's so fun. You can actually see the tornado in action. Oh, wait. So you're saying there's there's something I missed still. The initial frames. Let me look at that, Alchemist. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It looks like fuzz. But you can see the tornado. So, yeah, this is what happened. This is the tornado that blasted through Midgard during the, uh, the confrontation with Whispers at the end. And what they're implying is when we see this sort of, like, mirrored image of Midgar... This is not just some sort of like reverse image world. This is real. And this happened. And these are the consequences of that. Really cool catch there. Thank you, Alchemist. We're and then we're into here. it. Wow. Search and rescue operations are Crazy to see. And I, I love this, you know, just, just the work they put into this kind of like Shinra propaganda. As some people said, it is propaganda. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, also, why would they be treating these people like this? Like they're known... Shinra, um, anti-Shinra warriors, why are they trying to save them? It's called a search and rescue operation. Um, so there's a lot of questions here. Does that mean that this happened before we would have had our sort of, uh, first confrontation where they blow up the first reactor? Like there's so many questions, right? But we're going to learn all that. I'm sure. Do you think the party leaving calm? I do. I do think this is calm. Uh, I just saw Baby Seal talking a ton about it with uh, with Sleep Easy. I uh, can't wait to meet both of them tomorrow as well. But um, yeah, I think this is calm 100% because this would be the first time they are facing outward from calm into the whole world. Because if you remember in um, in intermission, it ends and they are actually like it's nighttime. So they're going to get to calm and they can't really see that far into the distance. It's still kind of like sand from Midgar sucking all the, the life out of the soil. So they're going to come out the backside of Calm, it looks like. Maybe, I don't know why, they're like in some like underground passage. Though maybe I have a theory that they were attacked or, or pursued by Shinra and they have to go a secret way or something, but who knows. Um, and they're coming out the back way. Because why would they be going through like an underground tunnel out of Calm? But anyways, that's, that's my theory. Looked like the meteor tornadoes. Yeah, that's a really good catch, Super Ramio. It does look like the meteor tornadoes at the end of FF7. A lot of tornado imagery, yeah. What if the scene where they're dead is actually the final scene for a cliffhanger? Ah, true. You got a good point. Tifa down. No. <laughs> we have to save her, yeah. Uh, in part to show the threat was collected. True. Yeah. So cool. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah. So let's continue on as we chat. But again, the visual style, I, I cannot wrap my brain around. It. it is so drastically, radically better than it was in Remake. Uh, uh, and again, there's like, you'll see some like artifacts, like little tiny artifacts here and there. Uh, that's from the compression, man. Like that existed in the original um, Remake trailers and it wasn't in Remake, especially on PS5 Remake. Like the hair is very smooth. So that's most likely just 1080p YouTube compression. If you see anything that looks kind of weird, like look at the lighting. I mean, and also I just want to say, I talk about this a lot on my channel. But I'm so, so glad we're getting beautiful, rich colors in this because this is supposed to show, you know, we're out of Midgar now. We're out of the greens and the grays uh, and the deep blues. And look at this just beautiful, rich color. Look at the nature, right? Just so, look at it all. It's fantastically oh. rendered. Like, and this is the it's shot so where it hit me. And like, if you showed this to me, it looks like CG. It looks like pre-rendered visual works stuff. Oh my God. If you see a side by side between the first game and this, it is completely different. Looks so much better. <laughs> like unbelievably so. I mean, to, yeah, the colors, it's just so well done, man. And, and, you know, I talk about like lighting and stuff in my other videos and this is just, it's so above and beyond like anything that we're seeing in other gaming's lighting. And if you didn't know it, FF7 Remake and this, they have a full like cinematic lighting team in the way that there would be if you were making a film. You can see that. <laughs> you can see that here. 
the ocean. Yeah, the purples and the yellows, the ocean. Yeah, and this game's not coming out for what, like, a while. Still quite a bit. So that's what gets me is just, just the visual power of the is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and like, it's beautiful. This was in remake, of course, too. This rich, just buttery bokeh uh, that they employ with this this glorious shallow depth of field. And even look at the edges of the uh, the ribbon. Have that little bit of a out of focus. Even her hair, like, it's just ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. So well done. Yeah, the voice actor for Red does the voice for One Punch Man. Yeah, that's uh, what's his name? I just escaped me, but I know his name. Uh, it starts with an M. Right, great guy. Uh, that's the engine at this point. I was just that's what I'm saying. This is the in-game engine. If you showed us to this, uh, if you showed us this in the remake time when remake came out would be like, oh yeah that's that's obviously cg it's just that good like the line is this small and i said this in my reaction video it is this small now between visual works cg and uh, the end game it's just so exciting man yeah the starkness of midgar yeah and that's what's cool is like it feels like a totally different game because of that and they were smart to to do that kind of like visually make it distinct out to the ocean, lighting the internet on fire. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's the next shot here, I believe. Just crazy. What's different about two-disc thing from the first game? Yeah, the first game was also two-disc. I actually wouldn't be surprised if there's... Uh, yeah, Max Middleton, that's his name. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it is a different situation from the first game. Because a lot of people are saying, like, why is anybody excited about this? It is an installation disc. Shut up. And, like, first of all, it's just fun to talk about. <laughs> So who cares, right? Second of all, it could be something else. We don't know that because they didn't talk about it with the other game and it was two discs technically, right? So I don't know. We'll see. Why would they say that? Why would they say on two discs? Right? But either way, it's worked. It's super hype. If it's an install disc, who cares? It's still super hype. It's that big. It's that grand. And I think that's what they're trying to say by showcasing that. All right, let's continue watching. So green. But yeah, she looks insane like she looks so close to the cg opening of Aerith and remake i wish i could get a side by side to show you guys like it's it's crazy anyways even after everything yeah look at the windmills and everything and i mean the from everything from the draw distance of the world and onward like uh it's crazy and look at this there's there's a water wheel here with these windmills like we're, gen we're generating power from them we've got uh we've got what looks to be a tower over here or a lighthouse um, where is this? It's just the people on the countryside, and that's what I'm so excited for. Like, the world of FF7 OG is very limited, right? And it's it's very uh, how do I explain it? You know, it, it it's not small, but it is, right? Like, you walk across a continent in 20 steps. <laughs> so, of course, there's going to be more houses. There's going to be civilization. It would be pretty sad if there was just a nothing, just wilderness all the way from Calm to the Chocobo Farm, right? So I think it's going to be so cool to have all this grass. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's grass texture and for an entire continent. You're like, ah, oh, great. <laughs> awesome for its time, but obviously nowadays we, we want it to look real. Yeah, a very large task on the brain. Yes, and that's the thing is, like, we had the original team back to say, okay, what would we have done if we could have? And that's what makes it so exciting. But anyways, I think it looks great. Let's We've continue. done to it. It's still going strong. And man, just look at it. It is massive. It's gargantuan. Ooh, and look at this. This mountain seems like it was uh, actually a quarry. You see that? Yeah. This looks like a quarry. It's like carved out. Um, it reminds me of the marble in uh, in Florence, in Italy. Near Florence, it's carved out of the mountain like that with those sort of very fascinating. So I wonder if this, I was just going to say it, could be the mithril mines for that very reason. Uh, so this could be actually looking at the back of the mithril mines on the way to Junon or something else. So yeah, I, I think that might be what this is if it is in fact a quarry like that. Yeah, so maybe we just caught something, guys. Sleeping old man in cave somewhere. Oh, I hope so. They 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 are putting in so many references to the uh, to the original. Yeah, 
Great world building. Yeah, and look at this. That's what I'm saying. It's not just a, uh, hey, thanks for the follow. It's not just a, like, oh, a mountain. It's, no, you know what? There's a mine there. Let's make it look like a quarry. And this very well could be something else, by the way. This could be coral, for all we know. We have no idea. So, And by the way, we probably are getting all that. We're probably getting all the way up to at least um, the end of disc one, but I think they're going all the way to the northern crater. They just showed the, the reunion in this trailer, like twice. I think we're going to see the reunion, guys. I really do. Midgar Zalem will be crazy if they kept that in. I think Midgar Zalem is going to be there, yeah. I do. I think it's going to be absolutely insane, too. Do you see that town on the right side? That's where they're running around with chocobos. So the Zalem is Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's the ruins. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's it's less of a marsh in this one. And it's a little bit more of like a, a forested area. But to be fair, we can't really see that far. That mountain's really far away. So there could be a marsh over there, too. Um, Yeah. Do you see that town? Still looking forward to Midgar Zalem. Did Sephiroth do this? Yeah, that's gonna be ter that's gonna be terrifying. I'd love to see him do it. By the way, can you imagine? Anyways, it let's continue. Look that way. Oh, this shot is not talked about enough. Just look at it. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. Oh, and look at the ocean. You can see the islands out there and everything. Like the sky looks great. There's also birds. There's also you know. Animals, it's just, it feels so alive. And I think they were really smart to like make that a thing right away. It's, like, oh, it's full of animals, <laughs> it's full of monsters, it's full of stuff to do. And it instantly feels more alive than a lot of uh, other open world games, which have kind of like felt empty and stuff. Like, look at there's stuff to do. There's windmills, there's civilization, there's animals. I'm sure there'll be treasures and puzzles and everything too. Yeah, and I really hope they take a page out of games like Breath of the Wild and stuff and, you know, add some sort of fun twists to the open world model. Like, for example, in Zelda, you'll do some puzzles with the Koroks. Yeah, there you go. I was just going to say, Mason, with the Koroks, you do some puzzles. Um, you know, it's not just explore, fight, get the loot of the guy you killed. Explore, fight, repeat, repeat. Like, I want to see some stuff, and I had a really cool idea. Let, let me know what you guys think of this. My idea is this. What if you can actually party switch when you're running around? I don't know if they're going to do it because they've only shown Cloud running around outside of battle. But what if you can party switch? You can actually, like, depending on the person you have, you can actually access different stuff, right? So imagine if you go into Yuffie, which we already had an intermission, by the way. She can send her shuriken up and whatever, activate something. Activate something. Uh, if you have red, maybe you can jump really far. Boom! You can bound really far and get over to like a little switch like you did in Remake. What if uh, Barrett obviously can shoot something? Um, if it's like super far away or like, a, I don't know, something to activate, whatever. You see where I'm going with this. Instead of Zelda where I go, I want uh, Magnesis. I want uh, Fuse power. I want this power. In this game, what if it's the characters are the or the power, you know, like the, the gauntlet power in, in Tears of the Kingdom. Imagine that. And I think, oh, it would just make it so much fun. And they could do crazy puzzles with that, by the way. Imagine just like a bunch of stuff and you're like, how do I open this door? Okay, there's a thing up there. There's a thing up there. Oh, let's use Yuffie. Let's throw a shuriken. Let's do this. Let's, uh, whatever. So I don't know. I don't know if they'll go that deep into it. They definitely don't need to. It's not like I'm going to cry if this isn't in here. But just some fun food for thought. And, uh... Even if it's just cloud, if it is just cloud exploring, I really hope they up his mobility. They've kind of hinted that they've upped his mobility just by showing this landscape, right? And they sh they said in the the Twitter comments, um, it wasn't the more. I think it was actually was it Kitase? It was whoever talked about the environments. Um, I don't think it was Nojima because he was talking about the writing, but uh, they essentially said you'll be able to explore the world with a great degree of freedom, like a high degree of freedom. Which tells me you're not just gonna, you know, walk in a straight line with like no interaction with the environment, right? I expect there to be jumping, uh, climbing of some sort. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see. And you don't necessarily need a sailcloth and all this crazy stuff. Guess which game doesn't have a sailcloth? Elden Ring. 
And guess which game is like the most fun world ever with Breath, of, along with you know Tears of the Kingdom, Elden Ring. <laughs> like so, you don't you don't need to have absolute you know everything and skydiving and sailing and stuff. It's fun, but um, they can still make the environment you know interactable enough and and believable enough to be super engaging. 3D version of FF7 world map and the internet. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing, Yola. Oh, you, you're comparing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Makes perfect sense. Uh, they can fix. They can have FF. Yeah, yeah. The FF10 character switching. We'll get that. We'll get to that a little bit later because I think there's kind of hints of it in here. We'll see. They may force party switches at times and switch up party members, uh, party leaders. That would be really fun too. Hey, you could, you could do it just like that. You could have it. So, okay, now it's Yuffie's turn to lead. This guy's turn to lead in different environments. And then you could still have that degree of like, okay, how do we solve this? How do we go here? How do we do that? Imagine Yuffie will be in the Mithril Mines when Cloud... Ooh! That would be really cool. Yeah, it's like, wait, there's we don't know all the info here. Let's retreat for now. That could be super interesting, yeah. Because now you got to ask yourself, it's clearly going to be like a cinematically motivated way that Yuffie comes into the game. I actually hope it is, and I like I hope I don't have to run around the forest for forty minutes to find Yuffie. <laughs> but of course that won't happen because she's not optional, right? They put far too much work into the into the writing and the acting and stuff for that. But I digress. You shared the map in Discord by the way. Thank you, man. I'll be we'll be looking at that. So feel free to check out if you guys want to see the Discord. You want to join and see this map that Alchemist is talking about? Please hop in, and let's continue our observation. You feel be worked into the cargo ship itself. That would be cool too. Yeah, that would be cool too. Uh, she does come in around Juno technically. I think it's the first time you can get her, right? That's where I usually get her after the mines. Let's see. But in reality, it's barely hanging on. <sighs> can we just talk about Nana? Reality, like, dude. Reality. Look at how good even he looks. Look at the fur and everything. Like, very well done. It's the feather. Hanging on. Ah, man. It looks so good. And this is the shot, yeah. This is the shot that's the most mind-boggling. <laughs> it just has all of the all the sauce in there, you know? The draw distance, the wide angle. Line. And that's why they're super smart here. Obviously, you know, super, super easy choice by the director. Choose a wide angle lens, a uh, wide angle lens to show off this beautiful landscape. It's so colorful, but it even has this little bit of like realistic haze to it that you would see on a sunny day, um, and that's kind of what I like about it. Um, it looks so real with the lighting, and that's again probably uh, Unreal Engine's you know extreme power at this point. But the fact that they have that just photo real light at this point, like, it looks. Completely real. If you were to take the characters out of this, you'd be like, oh, cool, where's that? Yeah. What part of the world is that? You'd think it was a photo. So it's that crazy. Uh, it would be hilarious if she was optional. Yeah. This is the shot. Yeah. This is the shot that just blew my face off. And then I realized, well, this is also the shot that made me realize this is in engine. It's like, wait, this is just it. Yeah. We're going to run around now, aren't we? And then, sure enough, the next shot, they're running around. But. It's just so impressive, man. It is. And uh, I, I couldn't have done it better. And it's crazy because... Screaming nonstop. Yeah, let it all out, Stinky. Let it all out. But no, I think what I liked about it, too, is just the fact that, like... It's so well realized. And that, that's that's been the theme of, of Remake from the beginning for me. It's so well realized. Uh, everything from the 10 feet... And I realized this, uh, the 10 feet between, you know, locations on the old world map, da, 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 and you're there. I realized, it hit me fully when we played uh, Intermission, the, the DLC for the game. When it, when we got a 5 to 10 minute short film delivered from Visual Works, from Square Enix, of just the 5 second walk from Midgar to Calm. We got a short film. These amazing cinematics and writing performs it like instantly growing the bonds between the characters and stuff. That's when it hit me like how fully realized this is, and uh, you know how how that's going to continue through the rest of the game, because they could have easily just had us like whatever 
fade to black. Oh, and now they're in common. We'll tell the story in the next game. Like, no, they decided to show the entire thing. And that attention to detail and attention to the, the characters and their growth is monumental. It's really, really monumental. FF12's Gambit system. Yeah, that would be interesting too. I'm super game. And the cool thing about that would be to combine that into this system. A lot of people love the Gambit system because it's so in-depth. Uh, some people don't like it because it's too in-depth. Right? So it could be cool if it was like, you can go that deep if you want to, but we still have this crazy cinematic battle system on top of it, so it doesn't really matter. But I know so many people who are like very analytical love FF12 for that reason because you can just go in and like create these like auto destructing computers essentially with the with the people yeah and i was terrible at it like <laughs> gambits but i still loved it imagine that i'm excited yeah all right let's let's continue basing my expectations on how new stuff will look the graphics of crisis core no <laughs> yeah not at all crisis core looked amazing uh they actually made the characters like a little bit softer a little bit more shiny and stuff in crisis core because you know it wasn't uh it wasn't on the full power of the remake engine but this this is a whole different deal man this looks like unreal 5 this is madness so let's continue i mean look at this was one oh God. and you got the animal yeah what's and i love that too that they show the animals instantly run out but what's cool here too is that we have these pipelines which again are just a super cool world building thing they did this is the the Mako pop pipelines that come from Midgar and go throughout the entire world to like power each city. And it's gonna be really cool when we finally get to the first city that does not use Mako, right? That's gonna be super cool because obviously um, there are other Mako reactors on the planet. Like we have the one um, in Nibelheim, we know too much about that one. And we have the one uh, in, in Coral and stuff, right? So, uh, this, of course, is like the pipeline for Midgar. So it's going to be really cool, though, when we get to a place like Gongaga. Me? Gongaga. It's going to be really cool when we get there because it's going to be a place without Mako energy. And you're going to kind of see that contrast. And it's like, oh, this is a landscape without the pipelines all over the place and stuff. Yeah. Observe each flower. Yeah, man. And I'll tell you, I wish they would implement a, like a, Especially with this big ass world, like come on, they should implement a uh, a telescope like Elden Ring, or a uh, uh, you know you can go FPS in Zelda and look around with your your purr pad. So, be really cool. But no, man, this is just great. And me personally, I've always loved doing that from like N sixty four, man. I used to in Ocarina of Time, Mario sixty four. The fact that you could just go and like look around with your character, so awe inspiring as a kid, and uh, kind of imaginative, and uh, I. Look at this world. I really hope they do the same thing. I'll give you some opportunity for that here. I was wondering what's the detail. been doing these past five years. Where's he been? This is one of the shots too where like <laughs> the visuals are so upgraded, man. Like it's and it's saying a lot because they're already so good in remake, but this is just like the the like volume of of light coming through, diffusing through fog, and it's like, it looks photo real. It's truly insane. So, I'm impressed. Very, very impressed. Yeah, it's it's like mouth agape level. It is ridiculous. What's Cloud been yeah. doing these past five? And I love that they show the contrast between a nice sunny day and then, ooh, okay, a little bit of haze, a little bit of fog hitting. You got the leaves falling and stuff. Just like, I'm trying to I'm trying to look around. Not to just observe how cool this looks, but I'm trying to look like for sort of like hints of what you can explore and where you can go. Because obviously we can walk up this hill, but what I'm really curious about is do we see anything that's clearly climbable? Like needs to be jumped over. Like these are the things I'm trying to see. Like there's a log there. Maybe it needs to be jumped over, you know. Um, so I don't, you know, we don't see any kind of hints of like, oh, that's a climbing thing or that's a whatever. So who knows, man, who knows? And I think those will, those will come in later trailers if they do exist, those sort of confirmations. Yeah, so much better, man, so much better. Multiple markers on the compass. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, look at that. 700 meters away, 500 meters. Yeah, we're, we're traveling big distances. 
Look at those flowers. Yeah. Beautiful blue flowers there. This is gonna sound crazy. Oh, Chocobo Farm looks so good. It looks so real. Uh, it's great. And of course the dialogue in the background, Tifa and stuff. We we talked a lot about that in uh in my initial reaction, but looks just as great here. Hey, what's up, Mage? Looks like the same forest in the scene everything. It does look similar, Mage. I wonder if they were kinda trying to evoke that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Look, you can see uh you can see Aerith standing over there in red, which is cool because it most likely means you're going to get the opportunity, like when you get into sort of like a rest space like this, the party probably disbands and they kind of go do their own thing, which is going to be super fun. And then probably when you like walk out of bounds, they'll be like, oh, okay, time to go and come join you, which I think that's a thing that happened in FF15 too. Yeah. Yeah. The forest pick up Kujata. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that. Tetra disaster, right? PHS, but yes, like a camp almost. Oh, don't get me excited, Stinky. Don't get me excited. I've been talking about camping in this game for literally years <laughs> since the original game finished. Um, I've really, really been excited at the prospect of a camp where you can go up and just talk to the party and stuff. Like, I love the camping in FF15. But what I will say is um, it was a little limited in that factor of, like, feeling like I was camping with the boys because there was a couple mini games, but I think they were like one time mini games. And then it was just like, Hey, you get the little, you know, background, uh, cutscene that plays when you're like cooking stuff. But I would love like this sort of thing to happen. Um, at all the rest areas where you can walk around, you can chat with Tifa, chat with Eric, chat with Barrett, talk with Yuffie, um, develop relationships, stuff like that. It could be really, really cool opportunity for that sort of thing. So, Let's see. Something Cloud does on his own. Yeah, true. It could also be like a, oh, Cloud, go grab that thing while we rest. <laughs> Mid-fight, he calls Sid. Yo, Sid, can you help out, man? Can you give me a Dragoon jump, please? Mini games. Yeah, man. Mini games. They'd be super smart to do that. Uh, hey, we're probably getting Gold Saucer in this game. So, mini games are going to go crazy. Test area because there's still more markers on the compass. It's a test area. Oh, a rest area. I see what you mean. Yeah, that's wild. You're right though. Yeah, 500 meters away. So it means this is in fact, like you can just walk in here from the map. It's seamless, which is bonkers, man. And then this is, this is appears to be those ruins we saw in the other shot, which is really cool. Um, let's look. Cloud was never in I mean, Chocobos look awesome. It's it's gonna be so fun to just run around with the party, like truly making it. Uh, like even look at this, you know, seeing Cloud on a chocobo like that and controlling him it reminds me of the old art by uh, Nomura. It's like this little chibi Cloud on the chocobo and everything. It's just crazy to see it in like photo real graphics. It really takes you back. And of course, we got Bugenhaga. Now, this, my friends, is in fact pre-rendered. It is the very essence of our star. This is pre-rendered, yeah. The you can see that from a couple different things. I believe. I mean, if this isn't pre-rendered, then... Oh my goodness, the man. The, the And I think it would be pre-rendered just, just for mostly like this stuff. Like the planetary interaction and everything's a little crazy. But it does look pre-rendered to me. If it's not, goodness gracious me, the graphics have gotten too good to even tell anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's CG, personally. The world map from the globe. Ooh, actually. The blood let's go back and look. He's talking about the live stream. It's just so cool to see Bugenhagen, too. I, I freaked out in my reaction, if you guys haven't seen it. <laughs> if you guys want to see my... It's me and Aaliyah, my girlfriend, reacting to it. We lost our minds. You can uh, check it out. It'll be, well, I guess, the second newest video, because we also put up the Ever Crisis reaction, but... We lost our minds, so I'm trying to breathe now and just relax, you know. Yeah, it's awesome. It's the very essence of our star. So cool, man. It's interesting, though, because, like, yeah, like, y Yolo said the faces, like, it. they're so similar now, though. It actually is a lot harder to tell. But what gave it away for me is actually the, the dress on Aerith. That's the one thing in the original uh, remake where it's like, oh, yeah. Of our star. That's definitely, uh, that's definitely CG, so you can always tell. It's like, 
exact photo real cloth uh, interaction and stuff Coursing through its planet. Yeah, he, he looks so cool man Bugenheit, like come on he's probably floating around on like his globe Terrific. thing his ball right on the ips <laughs> it's so cool Bugenhagen. yeah it just brings you back again like so cool so many memories and this is, of course seems to be the mithril mine as you can see there's some some ore there it looks really cool who got the pleasure of voicing Bugenhagen? I'm gonna be honest, I do not recognize the voice of Bugenhagen. I like it though. When we used to voice, uh, when I did voice acting for FF7, <laughs> when we played it after remake, I remember you guys made me give him uh, Master Roshi's voice, but that is not the case here. They didn't go with it. <laughs> it's the very essence of our star. Forgot the ponytail. Well, that's what's cool the is like you know, there's a lot of characters where you who knows what they were supposed to look like. You can't really tell because it's like so blocky. I really like this. Uh, I really like this mix, uh, or this this choice rather, how they how they brought him to life. Because you know you can see the original sketch, I think, but it doesn't look like that. Terry Vane's no, no, no. According to Hojo, they're connected. This is of course this is Rufus talking. Did to Sephiroth. Shadows of the Man, I believe he called them. I love Rufus's performance. I think he is one of the best in the game. He is so, like. Arrogant, <laughs> so well done, but you know it doesn't get like comically arrogant. It's just like this. Yeah, I, I don't care. It's fantastic. Look at the command menu. Call Chocobo. No kidding. I didn't catch that before. I was too en enthralled. Ride Chocobo. Yep. We are in for a treat. We can call it Chocobo at any time. Wait a second. Okay. Speaking about jumping. And traversal. I think that's it, guys. Yeah, call Chocobo. Number one, what does it remind you of? Call Torrent and Elden Ring. What made that game so fun to explore? He comes instantaneously. If we're getting Chocobos coming, that's it. That's my answer. That's how you can jump up here, man. That's going to be your jump. Right? That's going to be your jumping mechanic. It's Chocobos. So it could be. It could very well be, and that will allow them to kind of like, you know, not make clouds super mobile, like jumping 20 feet in the air and having a sailcloth and stuff. No, but we can have like Torrin, Elden Ring, got an awesome double jump. It allows for a ton of platforming and really, really, really fun stuff, but you can also access a lot of stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't be mad at it. I wouldn't be mad at it. If the Chocobo is truly like always accessible, like Torrent is. Which is funny because Torrent is actually not accessible in some areas, but, you know, for like story reasons and stuff. But um, I, I assume the same thing here. You can't call Chocobo in like the streets of Juno or something. <laughs> It'd be kind of crazy. But that could be it, guys. We might have just cracked the code. Yeah. Because that's been one of my main desires for this game is like, give us more exploration. You know, give us more freedom to get out there and 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 move in big ways. And that that could be it. If it's that easy to call it, I'm sold, you know? Yeah, smooth, reasonable way to introduce platforming. Exactly. And, like, that's why a lot of people, for example, um, didn't like the Crane minigame. I thought it was fine. Um, the, 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 like, claw game in the first game where you had to pick up Aerith and stuff. I think the only reason people didn't like it is it felt a little bit slow. I thought it was fine, but I get it. It, it, took, it took a while. Um, but it was a fun puzzle. And this... They could do all kinds of cool puzzles like that and platforming stuff if you do it, um, if you do it like that. Like, oh, now we got a chocobo. We got options. We can do this. We can do that. And then there's automatically like tons of options for stuff. I wasn't the biggest fan. Yeah, exactly. Aaliyah wasn't the biggest fan. A lot of people didn't like it. I, I, you know, I wasn't too, too, like hot or cold either way. I wasn't like this is the best thing I've ever seen or like this is the crappiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but like, I get that people didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Transform into Link and glide across. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. You play a game like Tears of the Kingdom or like Elden Ring, and you're like, what is this? I'm used to traversing all this cool stuff. So, yeah, man, they've got chocobos. We already saw them riding around. That's it. If the, I don't think there was a jump button. I kind of want to go back and see now, though. I doubt it. I doubt it was show on screen. Let's go back just one. Oh, look at that, though. Sprint is on R2. Dismount is R1. Wait a second. Scent? 
Oh my god, dude. Are we getting Chocobo hot and cold? <gasps> Are we getting Chocobo hot and cold in this game? Scour? Guys, you know what Scour is, right? I'm telling you, it's Dig. Dude, can you imagine? Because that was, that was actually fun in FF9. I can't even lie. Dude, we're going to be FF9 digging for treasure. Can you imagine? I think we're figuring out a lot of stuff here, guys. I th I've heard no one talk about it. Zero people talking about it. Everybody's too obsessed with you know the crazy story implications of this trailer. I think there's going to be Chocobo, uh, Chocobo Hot and Cold and maybe even uh, Scent and Scour. So it sounds like maybe like... You know, smell if you're hot or cold, and then dig. Oh my god, maybe there'll be like a sound alert or something? I have no idea. This is so hype, this is amazing. Special prizes, Aaliyah! <laughs> talking timelines, and that. that's what I'm saying, dude, we might have Chocobo hot and cold, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, no, we, we've cracked the code here. And that's what I'm saying, like, when you see, let me go back just five seconds here, when you see these, like, this platforms that are higher, easy. As far as I know. You gotta ask yourself, like, wait, is that a platform that we can get up? Okay, there's a path up to this one. But, like, the top of these ruins, like, I could actually climb to the top of this in Elden Ring with Torrent. Can we do that with a Chocobo? So you gotta kind of ask yourself these things, man. But, yeah, I don't know. Now now I'm now I'm really questioning. And, like, a jump button? So what's interesting, I don't see jump on here, but there's a command menu. Um, I'd be surprised they didn't have a jump for the Chocobo just because it's in FF. 15. It feel weird to like. It feel weird to be less mobile than FF15, but you never know. That was never in Mabel um, five years the ago. other interesting thing is this. Let me just confirm my suspicion here. According to Hojo, they're connected. Where was that? Where it said call? Yeah. So check it out, guys. Call Chocobo and dismount Chocobo are the same button. Kind of like Torrent as well, if I remember. So it's like boom. Call Chocobo. Hop on. Dismount. Call hop on. Like, if it really is that easy, we are going to have so much fun. And if there's Chocobo hot and cold, dude, it could make so much sense for, like, revisiting an area and giving a ton of, of uh, side quests and everything, right? Like, okay, we've already been towards whatever. I want to go back to the original area now that we have a Chocobo, and let's do some treasure hunting. Like, man, the amount of extra playtime and everything. Yeah, that's that's gonna be the one thing that takes it from you know remake being a very cinematic like super cinematically charged experience primarily, but imagine that with that mega dose of like Tears of the Kingdom, Elden Ring, addictive world exploration. And both of those games, of course, are not heavy on the cinematics. In fact, they're very light on the cinematics. They're amazing when they whenever they come in, but they're quite rare. A game like this that's going to have hours upon hours of cutscenes to ha also have that level. Oh, man. That's going to be great. The world is big. Yeah. Travel quick. Two on the Chocobos. Love it. Mechanics so early in the game. Yeah. Chocobo farm. Boom. We get it just like the original, right? Uh, you actually need to catch Chocobos back in OG. Yes, you do. Maybe it won't be necessary. Yeah, I would, I would assume there'll maybe be like a a mandatory quest at the Chocobo farm that's part of the story where maybe you help out the kid or whatever if I remember <laughs> help out his dad help out the kid and maybe they'll give you some free Chocobos after who knows so it'll be used maybe even when we get to Costa that would be awesome um, I would also love if it's like yeah once you have your Chocobo because of course Chocobo breeding happening later and stuff It'd be really cool if you could kind of like name them and stuff, almost more like a Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Can we customize our Chocobos with titanium rims? That's funny. We just watched Fast and the Furious, so, you know. <laughs> it's on the mind. Do you feel the Chocobos look too yellow? I actually don't. All right, let's keep going. As far as I know, Cloud God, it looks so good. Though. Yeah, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I believe you call. Yeah, look at this. Call Chocobo. And there's like this pipeline that it looks like there's platforms to jump on. I'm telling you, man, it's too too clean. Obviously, you can climb up this communications tower here, too. Sephiroth. So nice, man. So, so nice. Uh, 
Can we drift? Yeah, Chocobo Drift is an FF16, so that'd be pretty cool. Oh, and Chocobo Jump is an FF16, and I don't know if Clive jumps, so that would be pretty cool if it's in this one too, right? What's up, Shepard? Can't believe I totally forgot that Chocobo Breeding was in the OG. <laughs> yeah. It was there. It was there, and it was a deep rabbit hole. It's all coming back to me. Yeah, it's and that's that's sort of what's fun about this, is we all get to relive it, Shepard, you know? But in a very photo real way. The scene in calm is how I pictured it. That's what I'm saying. Dude, Red Penguin, you nailed it, right? This is what we saw as kids, man. You saw the environments and everything because it was like a stage play. It was just this upward view as if you're looking down from the audience on the balcony or something. Um, that's it. And that's how it was, was in all the old RPGs, right? And like, you know, Cloud's just standing there. He's telling the story. They're all chilling. And uh, this is a little bit different. The world is discussing timelines and we're discussing chocobo drifting and treasure hunts. That's right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I need to know if chocobos jump. Kind of blew me away. Yeah, so the dining table looked great. Uh, Baby Seal had a great point on this. He was talking about how look at the assets in this room. And you may be like, yeah, they look good. What's the point? Nothing in this room is reused. All these assets are completely new down to like the chairs. Like, I think we could forgive them if they have the same wooden chairs. Nope, completely new, everything on the shelves. Uh, and his point was it probably indicates that this is Unreal Engine 5 because he was saying a lot of the assets in Remake seemed like kind of uh, default Unreal Engine 4 that were like slightly altered. This looks like just completely new, completely redone, which is really exciting too. Like a lot of people, like I'm personally not a person who cares if they reuse the wooden chairs, I wouldn't even notice, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, I'd be like, good, save time for the these poor developers that are like, you know, hunched over their desks for 90 million hours a week. I would totally understand. But I guess the point is, this is just even more attention to detail. Yeah, every cup, every piece of fruit, like that, it looks new. Like this like cool flower uh, fixture and stuff. It's all new. Look at the cupboard in the back. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. What if we get new outfits? Oh, well, listen, this is my theory. I think we're at least getting some new outfits in the form of Golden Saucer. I think they're going to take Golden Saucer. They're going to crank it up to 11, just like we did with Walmart. And I think we're going to have like dancing and, and outfits and just like Walmart. It's going to be like, oh, whatever you said to Tifa in uh, Costa del Sol about her bathing suit choice is going to affect whatever she wears there. Whatever you said to Barrett. Did, did you like Barrett's sailor suit? Yeah. Did you think, did you think he looked handsome? It's going to affect what he wears at gold saucer on the date. You know, I really think they're going to do that and they'd be super smart, right? Cause everybody loved that. It was so much fun. And then cloud, maybe cloud instead of a dress this time gets a suit. Maybe he gets a sleek suit, right? And maybe uh, you can choose that. Or maybe like depending on whatever side quests you do or maybe it's cloud. Who gets his cool outfit? Because, man, I'm telling you, for the date, Cloud's going on a real date this time. With Barrett, with the boys. Yeah, maybe Barrett, right? Like I'm saying, maybe if you like, if you say something to Barrett about his sailor suit, maybe that affects his suit choice at the Golden Saucer. But, yeah, I'm telling you, they're going all out. They're not going to have Cloud with his buster sword out on a date in Gold Saucer. There's no way, man. He's going to be suited up, looking sleek, looking fresh. Uh, Barrett. Barrett as well. He's going to be looking good. And I think if they're smart, what they do is they don't have it so the two of you just sneak out of the room. They should have it so everybody goes out for like a night out and then um, the character who you've developed the closest relationship to maybe takes you aside and is like, hey, you want to you wanna go on a date? Do our own little thing? Because then it could be anybody and that'd be really fun. Never really thought about the expansion of the Golden Sun. I'm telling you, I've heard nobody talk about this. Just my insane theories and stuff. Like, can you imagine the possibilities of Gold Saucer? It's not just going to be like the original. Look at Walmart. It's a whole production. Just Walmart. That chapter was long, man. The Walmart chapter has got to be like the longest chapter in that game. It is gargantuan. There's so much side quests to you and everything. It's awesome. That would be so rad. Yeah, think about it, Sneaky. There's so much to consider, man. There's so many possibilities. Um, but yeah. Red, let's get red to 13. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a little extra feather. <laughs> Stylized, maybe a cool collar or something. Come on, let's get them decked out. 
a dog sweater that says like something nice on it maybe advent alternate costumes were hey man the advent children costume shepherd oof they are so clean they are so clean i would love the advent children outfits as like you know uh canon because you know they're in like mods and stuff for for pc but i barely know how to work mods man on a good day like most people don't it'd be really cool to have them uh, of course for console you know tifa with her hair down or cool new style yeah totally yeah you got to look at the gold saucer possibilities man like for the outfits it's gonna be really fun because we already had like the kind of big uh more gaudy outfits for uh like the don corneo spin on stuff so it could be really cool if they do something a little bit different for the dates with the girls but yeah you know you know they're gonna do it like they're not just gonna have Aerith and tifa and like their their standard outfits and stuff i mean at least i hope not i think it'd be a huge missed opportunity and i do think they'll probably do something on costa del sol as well um whether it's just you know one outfit for the beach or separate outfits for the beach i think they'll definitely do costa del sol outfits and it could be cool if it was kind of like a um kind of like a play on oh okay we're gonna scope out the beach for hojo but we want to blend in we don't just be like walking around the beach with our weapons out and stuff let's just blend in that could be really fun but yeah, again, it's it's just about how they spin it. Like you could make that super cringe if you did it. Wow, uh, Bill, bad. your stream is so cool. I'm so glad Chad is behaving. Yo. May the rebirth madness continue, Philip Seven Trade. It never stops, Seffi. It never stops. Thank you so much for two years. That's the two years, Seffi. What a what a perfect time. What a perfect time to come back. Thank you so much. Twenty four months. That's crazy. Appreciate you so much. Can we get a group goth outfit? That's what I'm saying, right? Uh, see Aerith with her hair to the side. Yeah, totally. That would be super cool. That's a great idea. We need Aaliyah on the stylization of these characters for Gold Saucer. If you guys have seen some of Aaliyah's outfits. Wowie. Wowie. Uh, they can't leave Vincent out. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, everybody's in this game. They're probably going to Northern Crater with this. Everybody's in this game. And they're clearly playing up the the this sort of narrative through line of this game is what happened in Nibelheim. Sephiroth's talking about it. Tifa's talking about it. Cloud's talking about it. Aerith's talking about it in this very trailer. Like, they're probably going to Northern Crater. They'd be fools not to. We got two discs, man. We can make it to another two discs on the PS5. We can make it to Northern Crater on the on the Unreal Engine 5, which is a powerhouse. One Tifa outfit from Ever Crisis. Oh, that was so cool, man. So cool. That, like, elephant pants thing. That was awesome. Can't leave Vincent out. Yep. Costa del Sol would be a great place to connect with Johnny. Oh, yeah, Johnny. That's right. Yeah, we're talking about Rebirth outfits, Seffi. What you got for us? What you got for us? Vincent will make me shut down. Definitely. Uh, I don't think this ends where OG Disc 1 ended, like some people think. Yeah, I think we're going to Northern Crater, Greg. Just for the narrative reasons. Part 1 is Midgar. It's a perfect first act. Right? It's a perfect, just boom, boom, clean. Uh, part 2. It's got to do it. It's got to start at Nibelheim and at the, the sort of resolution of Nibelheim. It's too, it's too good. And there's too much conflict that happens there for that sort of like Empire Strikes Back ending. I think they're going to do it. Uh, thinking about it, it, makes sense. They didn't reveal Vincent or Sid. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, because you got to realize, Alchemist, in this trailer, we got Elena for the first time. We got the world map for the first time. We got Red being a real party member, controllable for the first time. We got team attacks for the first time. There's chocobo like there's so much for the first time in this trailer. Uh, say they, I think it would have been a poor idea to put Vincent and Sid like, because you need you want to show them for a, a good amount of time. You want to show them for at least like 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds a piece if that's the character reveal. Like when they showed Tifa, they showed her for a bit. So I mean, it's already a three and a half minute trailer, man. You're pushing it if you're at like four and a half minutes. Um, you don't want to show too much, and then that's the perfect amount of time, man. We get two or three more trailers. Up until release, that's it. We get a Sid trailer, we get a Vincent trailer, and I'm sure the final spoiler spoiler trailer that shows the entire ending. <laughs> it's perfect, three trailers. Plus they have to show their combat. Exactly, yeah, you got combat abilities, you got a lot of stuff to show off. Team attacks with Sid, so much. I, I think they're really smart for not doing it. Um, we're clearly hyped up enough without it, right? So let's continue. That was in Midgard. We fought him. Whatever happened, He's alive. I love this. I love it. Look, again, this is more from the performance side and stuff, but like, look at the uh, 
God, look at the hair though. Oh my goodness. So what I love about this is they've they've achieved a super shallow depth of field here, man. This is this is like a 1.4. This is like a 1.4 aperture, uh, 1.4 f-stop. If you know if you don't know what that means, it's allowing more light into the camera, uh, and it is making a more minuscule amount of area that can remain in focus. So it's kind of like compressing it like this, compressing the focus. And you'll notice in like the wide shots that is a very opened up. Uh, it's a very high number on the aperture so you can see everything in focus, right? Because we want to see the world map. On this, we've toned that down to like, God, it's like a 1.4 maybe. Because look, even this, the strands of his hair are half in focus and stuff. It's amazing. Really, really, really cinematic. And again, what that does is it just doesn't let your eyes have to work. Like, you know exactly where to look. You're looking at Cloud's eyes because they're in focus, period. Um, you can enjoy the background bokeh. It's beautiful. It's smooth. It's buttery, but you don't have to. Yeah. And this is why, again, I always speak out against subtitles unless you need subtitles. Obviously, please use them. Uh, this is the beauty of cinema, man. We can direct where the audience, where the viewer looks with cinematic language tools. Cloud starting to use. Oh, no. <laughs> Cloud dropped the skincare. Yeah, he looks good. This one, this two bloopers, that would be so funny. <laughs> Elia. Catch cheese ultimates. Oh my god. You can tell he moisturizes. Yes, he does. He moisturizes with never mind. The lies and deception begin to creep in here. Lies! Deception! Save the dream! Cloud dropped the skincare regime. This is where I noticed the in-game engine was really different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It looks so much closer to the CG. Just the smoothness to the hair. Like, you can see it. Oh, man. Incredible. And, like, even his shirt, man. Look, look at his turtleneck. Like, you can sense the softness of it. It's crazy. Like, they've really upped the lighting. And, like, the way the light interacts with that. It's truly impressive. Especially in, like, a low-light scenario like this. Yeah. He really needed that eye cream. <laughs> Vincent Limit Break will be him singing Wake Me Up and so Oh my god, that's funny. That's very accurate. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. It looks like genuine fabric. Yeah, it really looks like genuine fabric. And it looks closer, so much closer to the CG. Like, honestly, I feel like they're using the CG models for a lot of their clothing. Because it looks very different. Like, look at that. It's It's so soft. He has huge irises. Yeah, he does. Crazy. Finally going to address Tifa's lack of any scars. And stuff. Yeah. Well, this, this was actually partly covered in um, in Traces of Two Past, which I'm really excited to read. I have the official English. I waited for it to be officially translated, so I didn't get some like biased view on it. And I have it, finally. And uh, I can't wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack that open and, and read it very soon. We got a very busy few weeks, but probably after that. Anyways, let's, let's keep going. Why come back? Like even this man, the close up, like this is where you're starting to see how uh how detailed a lot of the stuff now. is. I mean, yeah. I think what I've noticed too, guys, is the lighting, how it interacts with stuff. This is why it's probably Unreal 5. Look at the lighting on the leather right here. How it has this like textured diffusion depending on the fabric and depending on the metal and stuff. That is like photo real level of lighting. It really is. You see the pores on her nose? Yeah. Avalanche skincare line now. <laughs> Lip sync is also really good. Yeah. They they've been using that that uh system they created really well. I love the expression Tifa has coming up. Yes, very human. Actual pores and blackheads on Sephiroth. No, yeah, people were saying like this man's stressed. He needs to clean his face. That's why he's calling Genesis. Genesis, please answer. I need that one cream you gave me outside of Nibelheim. My pores, they're clogged with remnants of the past. Are you just saying that or is it the truth? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I need the Sarah V. Where did you take it? That's funny. (laughs) 
Genesis caller idea I was howling. Yeah. <laughs> Hojo developing skincare products on Zach's timeline. That's funny, man. Hojo's like, I've decided. Ay, yeah, yeah. Man, that shot too. Like this, I'm going to be honest, guys. If you, damn, man. If you showed me this shot, just like I said before with the Aerith one, like if you showed me this shot two years ago, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's that's the CG. That's the CG cloud. It's it's incredible. Just mind-boggling level of, of light interaction. It's, it's crazy. And again, this is the lensing too. This is the lensing coming into play because it looks so cinematically rich with that super, super shallow depth of field. Um, this is something that they really couldn't do before. <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. It didn't look good. This freaks me out. Good. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, when the main villain nearly kills a main character, leaving a scar and a trademark. Is that? Ah, yes. He doesn't take his lab coat to the beach in the original. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Sephiroth is peeved because he's getting crow's feet. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's continue. But yeah, I love the shot of Tifa. Um, After five years doing who knows what. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, they're really playing up the sort of questions in this, the sort of doubt, and it's, it's going to be masterful, man. It's going to be dramatic, like, what Cloud goes through in this specific game, this, this second part of the trilogy is going to be insane. Cloud and Tifa, they are really, really going to play up the humanity, and we'll talk more about it at the end here, but, oh, so well done. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, this is the reunion. Yes, we did see this, um, and that's that's such a fake out. Look at that. This same exact color scheme. And this is the Mithril Mines. They're trying to mess with us. That's what I said. I was like, is that the Northern Cave? Confirm. But no, nah, it's the Mithril Mines. But yeah, them showing this. Um, again, there's that little bit of distortion and vignette, so it's probably like a, you know, sort of a premonition, or if you want to say, uh, that Cloud has, like, when he interacts with Marco. But something's going on in his mind. Yeah, the static effect. Exactly, right? You know something's going on. Lighting bounces off the characters in the couch. Yeah, it's yeah. it's next level. It's so good. Tifa shared a scar like Sagat. That'd be wild. It was to be a faint scar. She's going into debt. That's why I didn't notice that trailer. There's some really, good. and that's what I love. Is like, man, they go into that level of um of detail in in this novel which i'm super looking forward to reading i've just heard snippets like that about like you know a young a young woman getting like viciously um altered and wanting to you know wanting to feel good traces two pants addresses this all right cool i'm i'm gonna give me one second we'll be back in one second just enjoy this glorious shot of clouds skincare routine i'll be back in one second I do a lot of push-ups and sit-ups, and I drink plenty of juice. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I could hear the alert, and I'm like, who's talking? What is going on? <laughs> oh my god! All right, let me catch up on chat. Jersey best. A lot of development. Aerith and Tifa? Yeah, I can't wait, Sefi. I'm so pumped. 
What retinol do you use at night, babe? <laughs> Break down this combat. Oh, it's coming. It's coming, Stinky. Right now. <laughs> you guys are so funny, huh? I'm checking the PS store every day for a demo of 16. Oh, it's coming soon, man. Um, we can only hope. Do you guys think Cloud sleeps with a bonnet? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, look at it. It's even more silky smooth in the second game. Uh, all right, here we go. After five years. Yeah, I love that. And we saw this. Yeah, Mithra Mines. Um, a lot of people noted that this is really cool because it's Barrett and Red teaming up. I love it. I think it's great. Like, they've already sort of built up the... The fun interaction between these two. It's going to be awesome, man. It's going to be awesome. So good. All right, here we go. I think we woke it up. Angered it more like. Yeah, that's going to be obviously a boss in Mithril Cave. It looks awesome. Feast your eyes on the Turks' latest and greatest, Elena. Like, Elena looks awesome. It's super cool, man. Like what a great uh what a great way. And again, this was like the new character for this trailer, so they'll they'll show Sid later and stuff, but very faithful design. Looks super similar to Advent Children, like not too many alterations here, so I'm very uh I'm very happy with it. What do you guys think? She looks a lot like Tifa. Yeah, yeah, she does. I mean I think Nomora's uh Nomora's drawing style too is gonna is gonna make some of the characters look kinda similar in the face. She has the same suit design as Cisne. Oh, that's a good point. She really does, yeah. Maybe that's like the female standard for the Turks. And she does an OG. Love it. Elena is as much of a doofus as she is an OG. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's kind of fun, though. I like, I like that she was kind of like new recruit type vibes. She is so sassy. She's perfect. Yeah, I like how she's like, I'm the greatest. Yeah, it's going to be fun. She may be new, but she's still a Turk. Rude looking great. Always love Rude. He's the coolest. He's the best Turk. He's so funny, dude. His like sunglasses switching is the funniest thing ever. I hope they keep it. <laughs> and he's got the I mean come on, he's got the John Wick suit. Gotta love it. Yeah, look at the texture on his face, man. Crazy. Big improvement for sure. Yeah. Look at that shot. Holy mama. Nuts. A Turk. Elena is just looking like a beast. Looking like an absolute monster. Wait a second now. Did we just get confirmation of something? <gasps> oh, no, we didn't. Okay. I thought that was Elena for a second. I was like, are we going to get... <laughs> well, are we going to get team attacks for enemies like that? Are we going to get like Rude and Elena teaming up? You can tell he shaves. That's huge. Yeah, looks like he has like... Shaved this morning. It's insane. It smells of shit. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> Turk's team attack. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, no. Don't do rude like that. <laughs> Rude's a real man. Dude, look at this. I mean, come on. Beautiful. Beautiful wide angle there. Ooh, look at Cloud's hair interacting as he swings to you, like, and she comes and hits him with the, uh, whoo, nice dodge there by both of them. And now this is the shot that just hyped me up, man. Me and Aaliyah popped off. We literally screamed so loud, like the mic exploded on stream <laughs> when we saw this. It's just so epic, man. It's just so cinematic. Like, come on. It's so fun. Like, God, it's so great. It's, it just puts a big old smile on your face. Like, come on, man. It's so cool. Yeah, we destroyed the mic, which is hard to do these days. We have very good mics. <laughs> like, back when I streamed the original FF7 remake, uh, there was no good sound. It was just me blowing out the mic every time I spoke. Another one of those shots, Stinky. It's just so epic. It's just so epic. Tate isn't anything. He's just completely irrelevant. He's like a buffoon speaking into the void, which fellow buffoons listen to. Look at this. 
This is so wow. There's a, that's a that's a really cool close up of Elena that we didn't really have before. She looks completely flabbergasted. That's how I looked when I uh, when I um, saw this trailer. <gasps> Actually, it was my face. That was hilarious. That cloud leapt so they could participate. In it. Yeah, that Aaliyah caught that. She's like, check the, check out this shot. Tifa is just in place. Cloud hops in so we can get that cool cinematic shot. <laughs> He's got to get in there. And come on, of course he's going to team up with Tifa. She's cool. Team combos. Oh, it's going to be so good, man. Persona 5. I know a lot of people like Persona. Never played it on myself. I've seen, seen a lot of it, though, on Twitch from friends. He wants to participate. <laughs> he does. All right, let's see. Ow. Yeah, this is just Aerith blasting her with, like... Whatever magic. Wow, look at that cool sort of effect. The symbol that pops up. The flowers, isn't that cool? Man, a lot of work even into like the magic animation. Shout out to the team. Another great shot of the world here. You can see some water. And the water looks great there too. Even that little tiny like puddle. Looks so good. Hat magic spell? What magic spell? Sorry, I got a Zeta Flares enemy. <laughs> Donald Duck approves. Gives her a little thing. <laughs> Rip her forearm. Yeah, seriously. I love this shot, dude. This is a shot where Cloud goes absolutely bananas. Watch this. Also, who is he fighting? This must be enemies from the original game, right? It, he's, they're just getting juggled, so you can't really see. But, yeah. This is the iconic shot. This is the shot that I just lost my mind on too. This is it, man. This is Junon. This is Junon. This is it. Plays with her feet in that scene. Gives so much personality while she's waiting near the near the wire. I didn't catch that. Something I'm wondering about was she like, like getting antsy to attack. You saying, Seffi? Something I'm wondering about: Did the devs change Cloud's Punisher mode attack animations? Uh, I don't think so, Algum. I think that was something else. I think that was like a crazy other technique because he was going bananas right there. I mean, unless I am thinking of something else. Donald Duck and Aerith team up would go insane. Yes. <laughs> Actually, does it happen in Kingdom Hearts? Not really, but technically. Is it those enemies just outside Midgar on the world map? It might be Penguin. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, man, this is it, guys. This is the high wind. And you can see the high wind like with the propellers going up there, which is just so cool, man. I think it's the high wind. It looks like it. You can't, it's a little bit obscured by stuff, but I think it's it. Ah, oh, it looks so good. Boss battle with one of the ultimate weapons. Oh, that's gonna be crazy. She's, uh, she made her way ahead of the group in excitement. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. That's super fun. Yeah, now I know what you're talking about, Seffi. I love that. I saw that too, and I was like, yes, it's going to give personality to explore exploration, which actually Final Fantasy XV did it really well too. You'd have Prompto. I remember Prompto even, like, going ahead of you and being like, kind of turning back and like waiting for it you. It is a gift. <laughs> it is a gift. So yeah, I think that's exactly what they're doing, Seffi. That's a really good catch. It's the high wind. Yeah. And like, come on, man. The size of the cannon and stuff. It's so cool. It's so cool. Actually, actually, Sleep Easy caught this one. I got to give him credit for this one. Uh, the similar lighting here, it being sunset, and the similar coloring to Genesis uh, Angeal versus Sephiroth. Did you catch that? It's like, ooh, a nice little reference there. Very smart. Singing and dancing to the hills are alive. Wow. For some reason, I'm really amazed how well they captured Yuffie's personality after all these years. Yeah, it's it's so good, Shepard. And we'll talk about Yuffie in a second because you're going to see her. But, like, it's not even just her personality. Like, she almost has no personality in the original. She's in Wutai, sure. She's in a couple scenes. But, like, she doesn't do anything in the game. She's a, she's a secret character. So the fact that she's going to be a, a necessary part of every scene now is going to have deep um, growth just like everybody else. Same thing with Vincent, man. Vincent is even less than Yuffie. Dude, we don't have, like, a Wutai for Vincent. He just shows up and he was so cool looking. We just had a bunch of headcanon for him. Like, he has, he has nothing. You know, 
can switch characters on the fly. That's what I'm thinking, man. That's what I'm thinking. What's up, Bardock? Love that name. Love Dragon Ball. Is Yuffie redesigned or maybe she's different Yuffie? Ooh, we'll look in a second. Yuffie is one of my absolute favorite things. Yeah, man. The DLC sold me completely, like, done. Absolutely done. You just said it, Snakey. Instead of a gag character, we do not want that. We want a, a rich character. And look at Red's combat, man. Vengeance mode. Looks so fun. He's just juggling people. Which, uh, I think it was Sleep Easy said this as well. Like, it could be something where, you know, he's going to juggle people into the air to allow you to then smack them with somebody else. Character switch. Yeah, this this team up attack is just so cool. <laughs> Tifa and Aerith team up. You know, it's so cool. Come on. It's so awesome. <laughs> like, it's insane. You know, the the toxic shippers are in shambles. Don't they hate each other? No. They don't. They're best friends. Look at this. They're teaming up. <laughs> it's awesome. Look at this, man. It's just so cool to see. Like, ah, oh, God. The, the weight of, like, pushing off the ceiling, too. <sighs> so awesome, man. Ooh, there was a cool shot there. We missed, it's like, one frame. Wow. This is such a cool pose. I didn't even catch this because it's one frame. <laughs> so cool. Phil, do you see Aerith and Tifa in the background? Do you think there's a bit? Okay, just tell me which shot. Is it this shot right here? Because I didn't see it yet. You can tell her by retaining your elements in the jutsu. Oh, that's a good point. I'll come and see him. Look at my boy. What are those bars under the ATB? Oh, yeah, the bars under the ATB. I have absolutely no idea. During Red's combo? Okay, let's go back. Red's combo. Thank you. Thank you. Check that out. Red's combo. I think we actually... comes after this, right? Oh, my goodness. You guys are right. Yeah. Red, Cloud, Barrett. Tifa and Aerith chilling in the background. But not chilling... They have their weapons out even, guys. They're not just like standing. They even have their weapons out, which they don't have out when they're just running around. Tifa is in a martial arts stance. Yeah, man. I'd say that's it. I'd say we got confirmation. There's, there's going to be character switching. There's going to be Final Fantasy X character switching. This is so awesome, man. Look at that. Come on. Subtext. Dude, what's up? We actually do have some really big discoveries here. Yeah. Hello there. It's mostly gameplay related stuff. We get some humongous discoveries <laughs> on like on like exploration and, and stuff that we're really I've heard nobody talk about yet. You have a check out the VOD. Yeah, yeah. We it was more in the beginning when they were like running around and stuff, but I think we find some some pretty good stuff. Let him cook, Khaleesi. <laughs> Let him cook. Yeah. You can swipe into that. Yeah, I think we've discovered subtext how um how chocobos are gonna work. I think there's gonna be chocobo hot and cold in this game. I really do. And I've heard no one else say that. Lazy. Thank you, Stinky Duck. Let him cook. <laughs> Let him cook, Khaleesi. Um, Chocobo Hot and Cold seems to be in, man. And I am so excited about it. Red's Vengeance Mode feels like uh, Control Berserk Mode. That's a, That would be so fun. YOLO. Sleeping on how amazing Yuffie is in the OG. Oh, dude, Shepard, I love Yuffie and the OG. I'm just saying, like, people tend to kind of headcanon fill in with their imagination to make Vincent and Yuffie, like, a lot more involved as characters in, like, the whole story than they are. They do nothing in the whole story except, like, their side quest. They really don't because they're optional in all the scenes, you know? So my point is, like, you know, when you when you have a situation, like, a big seminal cutscene, you know, they'll have like one throwaway line that is like, you know, oh, the substitute character, whoever it is, like they say something, and then it gets back to the main scene. Like now we're gonna have all these characters together, like really, really integrating the humanity and the performance into every scene. So it's not that they're like, you know, garbage characters or something, it's just that they have so little content to work with in the original, and we still love them so much, if that makes any sense. Which means it's just impressive writing. 
Not sure what the Chocobo thing means. I'm down. I did see what you can call Chocobo at any time. Yeah. It's it's super exciting set deck. I think it's going to be also our sort of like exploration tool. Um, a Chocobo. Kind of like Torrent and Elden Ring. That's that's what I've got from it anyway. Will it keep Chocobo breeding? I think absolutely, Sefi. Yeah, it'll probably be... I think it's going to be in the third game, but I think it'll be there, Sefi. I do. Yuffie was underdeveloped for sure. Yeah. Yeah, super underdeveloped. And it's not that they were underdeveloped. It's that they're secret characters. Like, you can't put in a ton of work. And by the way, the turnaround for games back then was like a couple of years. <laughs> you can't put in a ton of work for somebody who the character, who the player might completely miss. And, like, how complicated it would it be to do, like, two versions of every scene? It's just too much. That's why in this, they're obviously not optional because they're doing tons of, of written content, performances, and stuff. But that's why I'm excited. In OG, it's hard to get Yuffie anyway. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you played it without knowing where to get Yuffie, I mean, how many... Like, I've been looking for Yuffie, and I get terrible RNG sometimes. Dude, I've been there for, like, a half hour in the forest. You just get bad RNG. Like, you might go through the whole game and not find Yuffie, you know? So, um, she was so good in the DLC. So excited for that. Vincent has immense potential. That's what I'm saying. That That's the word, Sefi. And, and again, not to offend anybody who loves those characters. I love them just as much as you, if not more. The potential is what excites me for a, for a format of storytelling like this, you know? Yeah, Red Penguin just said they're not even in the CGI scene. So it, there's, it feels disconnected, you know? So they're not going to do two versions. Yeah. This is exactly why I'm both excited and nervous about Vincent's potential and Rebirth. I don't know, man. I would be excited. I don't know what... If you mean nervous, just like to see it and stuff for sure. Yeah. But I'm like... I got 100% confidence. After this trailer, man, if I didn't already have it, which I did, insane. Like, the storytelling is just next level. I want to flush out Vincent's confrontation with Hoja. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think they will. I think they will a ton. Even looking at the Dirge of Cerberus intro, right? The ton there. Hopefully Square Enix feels the same way you do about Vincent. Yeah, right. All right, let's continue. That's a great catch for our little FF10 character switching discovery here. Very exciting. Oh man, that just again. There's one shot here I wanna yeah, I wanna look at. It's this one. It's just so fun, man. And like again, I guess this is more what I what I think about when I talk about how Yuffie and Vincent don't have a lot in the original game. Was would anybody like to tell me uh how does how does Yuffie and Red like chat? Like what is their banter like? Would anybody like to explain that in the chat because Nobody can tell me because it doesn't exist, right? They don't speak to each other. They don't. We don't know how they interact. How does this young, like, fun, like, full of herself ninja, like, shinobi uh, interact with, like, the wise young dog? You know, like, there's just so much there, right? So I guess that's my point. <laughs> I guess that's my point there, right? Remake already handled the core characters. Gives me confidence for Vincent. Exactly, Inverted. I have nothing but confidence. Yeah. Cool side character to an interesting optional quest to a great character. Totally. Totally. And I have full confidence. Somebody said she has a belt now. I just noticed that myself. I just noticed that myself. Freaking fantastic. Freaking fantastic, man. I'm pretty sure the first moment she meets Tifa, she's going to be like, Anyways, we dress ourselves properly on this party, so here's a belt. Ooh, look at uh, look at Yuffie's arm armor too. I noticed this because I'm, you know, did a cosplay of it. She has like a different arm armor. Look at that. She's got like cool stuff on it. This is all new, man. Yeah. She's got some out some upgrades to her gear. That's super cool, man. The mobility of Red will be super fun. Character development through motion. 11 kilometers. Is it really that far on the map? 11,000. Wait, what does that say? That's so crazy. Cosmo Cannon Yuffie says it's a boring place and let's go find Materia in the OG. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I guess that's kind of my point. It's like, she doesn't say much more than that though, right? Red 13 combat looks super fun. Definitely. Yuffie's interaction. It's 11K. Holy. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's actually 11,000. Yeah, 11,000 meters. That's crazy. So to give some context on that, I've run many a 10K race in my life. 
That's very far. <laughs> it's very far. And for our for our U.S. friends, that's that's around six miles. Yeah, that's crazy. Cloud said, "Leg day forever." That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So this game is gargantuan. And what does that tell you? Wait, 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 wait a second. Does this confirm that we have at least a 11k wide walkable space? I think it does confirm that. Oh my god, this is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be insane. <laughs> what is going on here? I can't wait to see. <laughs> That's wild. Didn't notice this. Yeah. That's crazy. I think that's what that means, right, guys? We have an 11K open space to explore with Chocobo Hot and Cold, baby. I'm telling you, we got Chocobo Hot and Cold. You heard it here. I've heard no one else catch that. You will find side quests on the way. Definitely, man. Well, no, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't say that like, wow, it's a long, long way to walk. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> like, Yeah, and there's no way they're like exactly at the place you started. So minimum is the word there. Oh, Chocobo Hot and Cold from Final Fantasy IX, subtext. Uh, it's a awesome Final Fantasy IX minigame that a, a lot of people like. Yeah, if you didn't do this, if you didn't spend time on it, it's it's probably easy to forget. But I, I was addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, treasure hunting, scent, and scour. It's like, wait a second. Seems like you're going to be smelling, digging. Smelling, digging, which is just going to bring... Like, again, if we have 11k space to like search for treasures and stuff and get like hints from people Ooh, i saw some treasure around here it's gonna be so fun it's gonna be so fun yuffie has a special relationship with vincent yeah and they're just Cerberus. they they tried to expand the characters but i mean it was so after the fact that a lot of it felt like tacked on because it was so long after we met them it's like oh they feel like deep characters now but it also felt strange you know because we were used to them being side characters so i think now what's cool is they're taking all the good from all the compilation, uh, Dirge of Cerberus, Crisis Core, and like all that sort of storytelling, Advent Children's storytelling, fidelity, and now redoing the whole thing, which is so exciting. Lots of different colored quest markers. Yeah, man, there's yellow, there's like, it's super exciting. That one's like 800 meters away, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> insane. Truly insane. Anyways, let's continue. Let's continue. But yeah, that's awesome that Yuffie has some outfit upgrade. I really like the arm armor thing. That's great. That's great. She looks really cool. Yeah. And like this could be gear options, this could be whatever, but I mean I'm all for it, man. It looks super cool. That's that's really cool. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm looking at it too, because like if you guys didn't know, I did a uh, I did a male. Yuffie cosplay that was super fun. If you guys want to see it, it's over on Twitter with Aaliyah. It was so much fun. And when I say I did it, Aaliyah mostly helped me with it. <laughs> did like the entire thing for me because she's the cosplay master. But we cosplayed together along with her Sephiroth, which was the coolest thing ever. And you can actually see her Sephiroth like trending now on Twitter. So check it out. So far, quest markers have been blue, green, red, and purple. Oh, wow. I didn't. That's crazy. That's super exciting, Alchemist, because it's like. What could those be, you know? What if you use Chocobos to get a lunar harp? Ooh, that's a, yeah, that's a great idea for digging and stuff, yeah. That's so cool, man. I love it. Yeah, UV looks super cool. The Cloud Barret team up. Iconic. Look at this, man. Yeah, so this is where stuff gets interesting. Yuffie. Um, in this scene, thinks she's seeing Nero, the Sable, played by Sean Chiplock. We had Sean on the channel. It was super fun. And uh, she is traumatized from what happened in the DLC. She's saying, keep it away from me, please. We're running away, getting behind the comrades. Like, And they're like, what the hell is it? And of they course, say she's a monster. Talking about Yuffie character development, man, there it is. Like, there was obviously none of this in the original because optional character, and they didn't they didn't give her too much, you know? She would comment once in a while, but not do too much. And she was also kind of like that classic anime, like, has one thing that they do and, and does that continuously forever. <laughs> like, in Yuffie's case, it was, uh, of course, um, I want materia. Ah, and she, like, says that. 
that's her thing. You know, that's what she talks about, which is cool because when you went to Wutai, you got kind of the backstory of that or why she might feel that. But um, it's just going to be great in this to not have her optional, to have all this juicy, juicy uh, backstory. Association of Nero and Sephiroth with dark magic. Yeah, good catch. Thank you. Aaliyah deserves all the love and attention she's getting for incredible Sephiroth. Yeah, I, you know what, Shepard? I would have to agree with you. She certainly does. Genova Dreamweaver, the Genova Teleport. I did Alchemist. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I love that she's like a, able to create crazy illusions like that because what it tells you is like she can transport the entire party, like, you know, illusion world. Like, what can she do just mimicking people and stuff like that? It's very scary, the possibilities, right? Teleport, yeah. Yuffie here is still reeling. Exactly. Yeah. She's a tricksy. All right, so let's see. Again, just look at these shots of the characters, man. They look incredible. That she can. And again, this is not this is not 4K. It's not even anywhere near it. Like, can't wait to see how it looks. I have to say too, like Sephiroth really looks good. He looks so awesome. Like the she can the updates to his model too. Yeah. Wild, and it looks like he has a piece of Genova. And his hand there, which is terrifying in his own right. Pocket dimension. Yeah. It's awesome. Looking forward to Genova's theme. Oh, it's going to go hard. Cosplaying Trish from Devil May Cry. Ooh, that's a cool one. Yeah, very similar to the Sephiroth cosplay too. I see why you'd think that. Yeah, I love that. As Alchemist said, right? Look at this. Some crazy, like, realm. Man, they made Genova terrifying. But they really did pay homage to the original design there, yeah. With the skull face into the there. very depths of your soul. I love this line. This goes so hard, man. That she can become those you hate, those you fear, those you love. Yeah, man. It's it's so good. Like Tyler is just knocking it out of the park at Sephiroth. By far my favorite. Um, and I, you can't even say it's just Tyler doing it because a lot of it is the direction. Like what they're telling uh, Tyler to do with the character is very different here. And it's got this like kind of sultry side, this deceptive side to it. It's almost playful, um, but it's, it's still larger than life. It's still stilted. It's still scary and oh, menacing. That's a good word. Yeah. Those you love. How he sets that up, you know, those you love and gives this little smirk. You know, which obviously I think he's supposed to be hinting at Tifa. And then, you know, he's building this narrative of those you love. Those you love. He's trying to gaslight Cloud here, which is terrifying. Three. Yeah. Yeah. And as I, as I spouted all over Twitter, and a lot of people Three. freaked out with me, this is Cloud, isn't it? A lot of people thought it was Kadaj, which is actually a very like valid guess as well. I'm not even mad at it, but I believe that is 100% Cloud, yeah. Because I recognize the voice of Cody, who's another amazing actor. Yeah, this is the part that Sefi was talking about in Discord, and I was like, what? That's Cloud? <laughs> I did not even catch that. Yeah. So credit to Sefi on that one. Stara? Wait, what? It's so Cloud. Yeah. And I don't know. I've seen some people still say uh, it's Kadaj. Some people still say it's just, you know, Marco, whatever random guy. But I think it sounds like him. I'm with you, Sefi. That's me. I kind of initially thought Genesis for a second. But yeah, Cla it could be Genesis too. Honestly, none of this is none of this is, is uh, out of the question. Um, I am not one to speak with absolute authority about the about especially theory stuff because it's, it's not really my main focus usually so yeah i i so my theory is this i do not think this is necessarily like you know other cloud or something like that i think this is just the dialing up the surrender that cloud has um and this is most likely him black materia something related to that that's that's my angle on it um i've heard some really cool theories otherwise too but we shall see what it ends up being. I can't wait to yeah. go along to the ride. I'll tell you that. Now, this is the standout scene for me because this is where stuff really got dialed up. You murdered my dad. 
awesome shot of the Masamune. They just... You burned my village! And now this is what's significant here. Yes, he does indeed stop the sword with one finger. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Truly insane. What did I miss in chat? Genesis. Uh, it seems like Cloud has taken Marco's place. Yeah, and that that's the cool thing uh, that I really liked about it too, Alchemist, was that the whole thing with Marco is like, oh, when Cloud sees that, it's like, ah, oh, it's this weird guy. But you figure out, like, that's Cloud that you're seeing back then. So that's what's so cool about those little scenes where um, that foreshadowing is just so, so strong. So, so strong and so important. And there's such an attention to detail with it that, you know, when you were, if you were to go back, and check out stuff like that after you played the games you'd be like oh my god that was set up so early and that's what makes it so cool and again this could still be a hundred percent probably the strongest theory i would say the most like plausible theory at this point is that that is just like a deception it's like a lies deception set up by genova just a just a vision of of something crazy to to get to gaslight him to throw him off some more as sephiroth is clearly trying to do here square let me fight baddies with cowboy tifa outfit you coward <laughs> hey you never know cowboy tifa looks cool there though the bracelets yeah look at the bracelets i heard a really cool theory that cloud used preemptive strike material to catch safroth off guard that's so fun <laughs> that's really fun stardust hey what's up stardust been a while since I've been here. I remember watching your streams as you were playing FF7 three years ago. Wow, it's so good to see you. Always loved your inputs on the game. Hey, we're back at it, Stardust. You know, we're back at it. So it's great to have you back. And the same for all you guys. I see a lot of names um, who haven't been here in a bit. Uh, we're that's what's kind of fun, right? Is we're able to enjoy this experience, these games together, however long this saga is going to go on. You know, and we got FF16 coming, which is really fun. Love that we were seeing this. Yes, thank you. It's so good. Right, it's awesome Stardust. Welcome back. And I know for a fact most of my community came from no. that era. It was it was FF7 remake and then the post FF7 OG that I played, where I know a lot of you guys came from. I appreciate I you all so much. Let's look at this. Sefi just lifting. Oh, Sefi in the game, I should say, not in the chat. Lifting her up. Killed her. That is, so, who is she? That shot is so terrifying of him up there with like the Genova sign behind him like that. Ooh, it gives you chills, man. It gives you chills. It's so cool. That's when I joined the squad, FF7. Ah, oh, there you go, Shepard. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys came from there. It's It's been a pleasure to have you in the community. One arm lifting needs to be, yeah. Arm muscles. On, yeah. He is next level, as we've known. Uh, it's not black smoke. I think. I think so. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think it's neither blood nor smoke. I really wanted it to be blood, but I think it might actually be something else, guys. I think it might actually be cloth. Yeah, I think it might actually um, supposed to be the cloth of her leather breaking off, um, which is yeah, unclear, unclear. Maybe it is blood. I really hope it's blood. I know that sounds really cryptic or really morbid, but um, I want it to be blood. So of course, you know, we're gonna get get some you know future scenes that. I think should have it <laughs> for, for sort of like emphasis on stuff. Um, again, I'm someone who's super against gore. I thought the Mortal Kombat was hilariously over the top and, and to the point where it can't even be taken serious and it's just like disgusting, essentially. This is not that at all. But I guess my point is um, you didn't see any blood when they were on the stretchers after the tornado. It was still just like the kind of scratches that Biggs had and stuff when he was injured, mortally wounded, um, and Jesse, right? So, uh, I don't know, guys. I just don't know. But 
I think it probably is also could be the case that we do get it um, in later scenes because in intermission, there's a little bit of blood, just a little bit of blood, just a little bit. And I, th I think that's fine. That sort of thing's fine. I don't need rivers of blood. I don't want it. I, has, I don't think it has a place in Final Fantasy. Uh, I, I guess I should say in Final Fantasy 7, 16 is clearly going to have a lot of blood. <laughs> but I think it's going to fit that world. Um, and I don't think it's going to be, you know, over the top, like Mortal Kombat in 16. And and uh, I think it's going to be a lot more tasteful. But this, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's unclear. We don't really know at this point. I think it could could be blood. The good, the good news is this. It looks like blood. We're just super overanalyzing. If I saw it in the game and hadn't seen this trailer, that's what I think it would be. Who is she? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great either way. It's clearly not like whispers stuff too, so don't worry about that. Yeah, Integrate did have it, but again, um, the DLC, I don't know if that affects anything. Yeah, but I think it's whatever. It, it's kind of irrelevant, but I'm only theorizing on that because how it's going to affect later scenes where people do get wounded and um kind of like with the big scene it's like wait how bad is his injuries he's got dirt on his face you know so um in situations like that it can be good to have like a little bit just a little bit of you know a mark here or there um but otherwise yeah you don't want to go too far it can it can kind of distract in my opinion uh, a lot of scenes in og are dark so blood just adds a little more weight yeah but you know back then it's, it's like lego people so you know it doesn't it doesn't carry the same weight it's not as scary or, or uh traumatizing for a child to like see like a lego person you know get hurt hence why we all you know threw our toys and went crazy with them or was that just me it's blood i contemplated whether it was blood or a piece of tv uh but it came from the clothes from close to her body so it's blood i believe yeah i i think it could be too i'm i'm just kind of talking about the possibilities i do hope it is again that sounds super morbid but yeah, um, that could also be they, they could be big brain enough to because uh, I hate to say it, but look, there's actually a red tin, uh, a red light hitting the stairs on the side. See, so they could be that big brain to have been like, yeah, don't worry, ratings system. This is actually cloth that has the red light from this angle, which is hitting the stairs reflecting off it. But it is cloth, I assure you. So I think that's actually what it is. But uh, they're very clever if they did it like that, and they're they're damn near genius. In fact, <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, just looking at the lighting of the stairs, it's definitely a, a red tint there. So I think that's that could be it as well. We'll see though. I I'm not again. I'm not gonna be like what the heck? There's no blood. I don't I don't need it. I saw she got hit by a sword. Um, again, it was more in the big scene where I was like, we don't know what happened to him. Did he get shot? Did he get hurt? Did he fall? Is he is he have a broken bone? Like what's wrong with him? Um. Just for the just for the sort of context, this we don't need the context. We we see it. So, Mortal Kombat over the top. Many of the developers ended up with PTSD. That's what I'm saying, man. That is that really freaked me out when I heard that too. I was like, damn, that's kind of messed up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, and I don't think it's probably good to like play games like that 24 <laughs> seven. Just like embroiled with tons of suffering and destruction and everything, but. Who knows? Maybe it's just me. I don't feel so good. Maybe it's not. <laughs> See? That's how I feel when I watch the Mortal Kombat trailer. <laughs> Tifa getting slashed. Yes, as long as she says. Yeah, no, this is this is like one of my favorite shots in the <laughs> That was amazing. Well played, Seppi. This is one of my favorite shots in the trailer. It just it looks so cool. And the the light look at this is why I'm saying this is probably Unreal 5, too. Like, look at how the light plays. Uh, is diffusing like just on the side of his head as it filters up there because there's clearly like another light on the door right there and then there's these like as if there was a little bit of smoke in the room or something like this is photo real level of lighting man it's absolutely incredible so yeah this game is ridiculous and look at the you know his 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 cloth leather i suppose it would probably be or something like it uh, how the light interacts with it and stuff it's just yeah, you get this beautiful rim lighting around his head in the in the metal there. It's just like it's masterful cinematic lighting. Like this is not random. It was perfectly placed to give that effect um, and perfectly exposed. And by exposed, I mean 
you know, the lensing and the aperture and the shutter speed and everything. It's a scientific level of, uh, of lighting. And this is what happens when you have a lighting team. You really see that difference. So. The fall she takes down the stairs was almost more brutal than Sephiroth slicing it. I mean, that fall is super brutal. You would be in pain for sure. I can imagine how terrified people but yeah that's why i love this like you know you see the original you just see the one angle the pre-render background she falls down the stairs like that's scary man <laughs> that's really scary you look like a monster cold as ice man look at him and she was yeah she's super young man scene took place in the is yeah totally Sefi. it's scary stuff man it's scary stuff um but yeah it's it's great i i i We've we've looked at it microscopically at this point, <laughs> all the details of it, and I could talk about it all night and all day. It's so much fun, it's so so much fun. Um, Aaliyah, is there anybody good on Twitch right now? But yeah, man, I've I've been having so much fun with you guys. Like I, like I said, I wasn't even gonna do this stream, and I was like, you know what? I am gonna just watch this on repeat with you guys because i've been doing it all day anyway when i when i have time so super exciting but we have some very big news uh me and alia are headed to a oh, baby salon oh. yo stinky duck with the 10 gift subs the 8-bit d nightmare greninja dustman yozora necklord samurai mephisto Oh man, Moose and Bastard. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can we get some cowards at first, man? If you got a if you got a gift sub, can we please get some cowards at first or something in the chat? Thank you so much, Thank you. That is way too kind of you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Oh my god, Seffi! What is happening? Seffi with a 10 T tier one gift subs Sevy, that's so kind to you thank you man people are getting some getting some good action here get some gift subs let's get some thanks in the chat oh man look at that look at that lee emote in the chat <laughs> thank you Sevy. Oh, i appreciate you so much and again shout out to Sevy for that i mean apparently i'm insane i did not see that was cloud so thank you so much Sevy. And the stream of the bank, man, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. I I can't wait. And like, who knows? Maybe we'll look at FF7 OG again. I've been oh, saying no, it to Aaliyah. I think it'd be really so fun. Cool. I'm so glad Chad is behaving themselves. Hera with the sub for 29 months. We got a hype train. What is going on? You guys are the best, man. But yeah, I've been I've been saying it to Aaliyah uh, for a while. It's like we should sometime just pop on FF7 OG and do like voice acting for parts of it. I think that'd be so much fun, like we did for FF6 and FF5 and stuff. That'd be so fun. Yeah, we can just do like male female roles. This was so much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for streaming. Baby Seal is on. Uh, as is Diaz, Finny, Keo, Smoke. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Can anyone uh, spell Baby Seal's name for me? Because it's his actual Twitch name. I want to make sure I spell it right. Just like copy paste it or something. Revisiting the FF7 madness. Yeah, I would love to, man. And like I said, I think I think Sefi, you were saying that yourself, right? That Philip Weapon solo. <laughs> yes. You remember that, Sefi? Oh my I have to repost that clip. It was so funny. Long story, guys, but I ended up beating Ruby Weapon. First time, thank you so much, Aaliyah. First time, thank you, Alchemist. Uh, blind. I'd never fought Ruby Weapon. I'd never looked up anything on Ruby Weapon. I went in completely blind and won first try. Just screaming cowards die first and using smelling salts in real life. It was insane how it went down. You wouldn't believe it. You will not believe how it went down. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. And a character who I named Philip in the game, not actual Philip, was Vincent. And Vincent soloed Ruby Weapon by himself. It was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it was so crazy that they chat was laughing at me like, ah, ah, he's never gonna do this. Hilarious, Phil, ah, let's watch him get destroyed first time blind. And they're like laughing because I clearly had no idea what I was doing. 
And then my strategy was just so re- stupid and, and nonsensical that it worked. But it was like slow war of attrition where I was like, wait, I can only do this strategy for so long. But if I was to somehow like outlast the boss, then I will win. And it, it hit chat after like 10 minutes of this battle going by. And it looks like my party is going to be dead no matter what. And then Sefi is in chat back then. And Sefi was like, oh my God, wait, I'm running the numbers right now. I, I literally have a calculator out like speed dialing and I, I think it might be possible and i was like what it might be possible and she's like yeah i i think it might be possible oh i'm serious and everybody's just like no you're joking nah th- this is stupid he can't win he didn't know what to do ruby weapons the hardest thing people research this for months before not months but <laughs> they research this for months before they even attempt it that's impossible even for a computer and stuff he's like I'm running the numbers. It was so fun. Yeah, and she did it through FF8 too. But yeah, we go and we ended up beating Ruby Weapon. I have the clip. You guys can see it on my channel. I have the clip. It was the funniest thing ever. Absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. And we did win. <laughs> so I will have to like post this to YouTube again. Because it's so many years ago now. Uh, I think it was right Yeah, it was right after FF7 Remake came out. So, you know, not that many years ago, but... A few, but it was just so much fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. You were on Polygon. I was on Polygon. What do you mean, go away? Do you mean the, like, the website? Did I miss this? This whole stream deserves to go to YouTube. This was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Alchemist, man. I, uh, I had such a good time. I had really such a good time with you guys today. Um, and this, it's an article on Twitter. I'm on Polygon right now? Is this a new thing? Am I insane? But yeah, I, <laughs> it's true. Wait, what's happening? Re- Rebirth Remake Part 2 Theories Timeline Tifa. Did somebody share my tweet on Polygon? Is that what happened? What? That's so funny. If that's true... Well, no, I, this is my Tifa one. Okay, this is my Tifa theory. Yeah, no, that my tweet did really well. Because I was just explaining, like, a lot of people were confused about what was happening. And I was like, no, don't worry about it. This is just Sephiroth trying to gaslight Cloud about Tifa. This is him saying she is going to do this and he's going to get you to then doubt Tifa and everything. It's going to be great. I'm on Polygon? What? <laughs> That's amazing. And thank you for the hype train, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I definitely want to throw this on YouTube. I think it's a bit... It's a bit long, but I mean, damn, maybe I will just throw it up. This is a great conversation with you guys. Yeah, so much fun. It is a gift. It is a gift. <laughs> Polly Gaines, that's right, can confirm. Wow, I need those royalty checks. Seth, you said it. Need those royalty checks. You know, what can I say? <laughs> this is crazy. So wait, I think me and Aaliyah both got an article including us today. Or was that yesterday? It was one of the two. But yeah, Leah is in an article as well today on Screen Rant for her cosplay. <laughs> Look at us, we're all grown up. So proud of you, Leah. Greatly engaging conversation. Yeah, man, it was so fun. This reminded me of the old days. Let's let's do more of this. Love just chatting with y'all about the stuff. And uh it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Yeah, thank you, Stinky dude. Thank you everybody for the gift subs again. Sefi, Stinky, much appreciated. Um, big news if you guys are just joining. Uh, if you're just joining right now, oh, I'll link Twitter too if you guys want to see what's going on with my, my Tifa tweet that apparently is on Polygon. <laughs> Check it out. Um, uh, so me, me and Aaliyah are going to the Final Fantasy 16 event in LA with a lot of your favorite Final Fantasy content creators. So we're going to be there with them and it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so fantastic. So I cannot wait to, uh, to be there with you guys. Uh, in spirit, and we are going to be also possibly streaming Final Fantasy 16. So we'll see what's going to happen. But um, as you guys can see, uh, Square Enix has announced there is going to be uh, a stage and everything. It's going to be live, so make sure to look for us. We will be there, and uh, we'll be reporting in as much as we can and creating some fun, you know, content with our fellow content creators because it's going to be so fun to meet everybody. 
It'll be so much fun, man. See you guys with the gang. Yeah, it's it's gonna be great. Like Baby Seal, Sleep Easy, just uh, Night Sky Prince, like everybody, uh, literally everybody in the FF community. It's truly insane. So the timing. Oh, did Nomura kill the camera? Stop. <laughs> Why does he always do it? Nomura! Why'd you silence me?